In this video, we're going to talk all about the super keyword in Java. Super is one of those keywords that people kind of think they understand how it works, but maybe you're not quite clear what exactly it's doing and when you need to use it. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what you can do with the super keyword and when and how to use it. My name is John. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned with you in a clear and understandable way. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, what is the super keyword used for? In general, super is used to access things in the parent class, the super class of the class you're working on, hence the name super. So for example, if you have a class like this animal class that we have here, you might have a class that is a subclass of animal. For example, a cat class. This cat class extends animal. So animal is the super class of cat. So within the cat class, you'll use the super keyword to access things in the animal class. There's two main ways you can use the super keyword in your classes. The first way that you can use super is to call methods in the super class that you've overridden in the child class. So what exactly does that mean? Why would you want to do that? Well, for example, over here in our animal class, we have this method public void make noise. And all a generic animal does to make noise is print out, hello, I am an animal. Seems like the kind of thing an animal would say. Now the cat class, which extends animal, would probably make noise in its own specific way. So what we might do in our cat class is override the public void make noise method. So cats will make noise in their own way. So for a cat, we can print out meow, meow, meow. As a side note, because this method overrides the make noise method in the parent animal class, although it's not necessarily required, it's good practice to use the at override annotation here. So now if we go back to our main method and create a new cat, my cat equals new cat and call my cat dot make noise, it's going to print out meow, meow, meow. But what if inside the cat class's implementation of the make noise method, I want to be able to call the parent animal classes version of the make noise method. How can I do that? Well, that's where the super keyword comes in. So over here in our cat classes make noise method, to call the super classes implementation of that make noise method, you just use super dot make noise. So now when we call the make noise method on a cat, it first calls the parent classes implementation of the make noise method, which should print out, hello, I'm an animal, and then continues on and prints out meow, meow, meow. And if we go back and run our program again, that's exactly what it does. You don't necessarily have to be in the child class's implementation of the make noise method in order to call the make noise method in the parent class. You can make the same call from any non-static method in this class. So for example, if we had another method like public void jump, you can still call the super classes make noise method from here, just as you could over here. But in most real world scenarios, you'll see that super class method being called inside the method that is overriding it in the subclass. But it's good to know that you're not prevented from doing that if you need to. You can also use super to call parent class methods that you don't override in your subclasses. But as we'll see, there's not really much reason you'll ever need to do that. Like here in our animal class, it has this public void eat method that just prints out munch munch. But in the cat subclass, we aren't overriding that eat method with anything. But since cat is a subclass of the animal class, it automatically gets this implementation of the eat method. So even though we're not overriding the eat method, we can still call my cat dot eat. So now it's also printing out munch munch. So in the cat class in any method that we want, we can call super dot eat if we want to. That will of course call the super class, the animal classes implementation of the eat method. But in this situation, we don't really have to use super. We can just call eat. And because our cat class isn't overriding the super class's implementation of the eat method, by default, just calling eat will get us the animal class's implementation of the eat method. That's why you only really need to use the super keyword when you specifically want the parent class's implementation of a method that you have overridden in your subclass. There are a couple things to note about this though. The first thing is you can't just do this from some other random class. For example, back here in our main method, you can't just say, hey, my cat, I want your super classes implementation of the make noise method using something like my cat dot super dot make noise. It's just not a thing. The super keyword can only be used inside a class to refer to that class's super class, its parent class. 
The second thing is that you can't use the super keyword to access any private methods or fields in the parent class. Since they're private, they're still only going to be accessible to that parent class and not anywhere else, even if you do use super. So if in our animal class we had another method, private void do something private, hey, this method is private. If we then go back over to our cat class and try and call super dot do something private, we'll get an error that says this method is not visible. And that's because it is still private to the animal class. But if this method happens to be either public or protected, then you're good to go and you'll be able to access it from the subclass using super. The second way that you can use the super keyword is to call the parent classes constructors. But that seems a little weird, right? Why would you want to do that? Let's look at an example. Let's say that here in our animal class, we had a new constructor, public animal. Now this animal class has two fields, an int age and a string name. So in our constructor, maybe we want to take in those two values and set them on the object that's being created. So we can take in an int age and a string name. And to set those two values, we just want to call this.age equals age and this.name equals name. By the way, you can check out this video here if you want to learn all about using the this keyword. It'll clear up any questions you might have about how to use this. Anyway, so this constructor allows us to set the animal's age and name when it's being created. Now over in our cat class, we probably want a similar type of constructor, right? That can take in this cat's name and its age. But in our cat class, we also have a field that doesn't exist in the animal class because it's specific to cats. And that's a string cat food preference field. So in our constructor, we probably want the ability to set that when the object is being created too. So we can create a new constructor, public cat, that takes in those three fields and sets them on the new cat being created. So it takes in an int age, string name, and a string cat food preference. And we can set those three fields in the same way, this.age equals age, this.name equals name, and this.cat food preference equals cat food preference. So now we have a constructor that takes in all three of these fields and sets all three of them on the new cat being created. But if we look closely, there's kind of a little bit of code duplication happening here, right? So here in our cat constructor, we're setting the age and the name that's being passed in. But in our animal class, we already have a constructor that's doing that. So it would be nice if we could use this animal constructor for setting the first two values on our cat. And then we just need to set the cat food preference on top of it. Well, the super keyword allows you to do exactly that. We can use the super keyword to call the parent class's constructor from here. And to do that, you just call super. And then in parentheses, you pass in whatever parameters are required for the super class constructor that you want to call. Here we want to call this constructor that takes in the int age and string name. So all we have to do is pass in age and name. The super class constructor that we're calling here, this animal constructor, will take care of setting the age and the name. And we only have to worry about setting additional values that are specific to cats, which here is just cat food preference. Using super like this, it will call the super class's constructor that matches the parameter types that we pass in. But if you try to pass in types that the parent class doesn't have a constructor for, like if we added, I don't know, another string like John, the parent class doesn't have any constructor that takes in an int, a string, and a string. So you'll get an error here. So now let's try calling this new cat constructor that we made. So we need to pass in an age, a name, and a cat food preference. The age is three, the name is George, and the cat food preference is Purina1. To make sure those values are being set correctly, we can go ahead and print them out. My cat dot age, my cat dot name, plus my cat dot cat food preference. And of course, we have a three-year-old cat named George who prefers Purina 1. Now, there are a couple of things you need to know about using super like this to call the super classes constructor methods. The first is that calling the super classes constructors can only be used inside the subclass constructors. It doesn't make any sense to do it in any other method, so if you try to do it, you'll get an error. Also, when you do use it in a constructor, it has to be the very first line of that constructor. So if you try to just switch these two lines around and have it set the cat food preference before calling the super class constructor, you will get an error saying that the constructor call must be the first statement in a constructor. By the way, one of my favorite shortcuts for Eclipse is pressing Alt and the arrow keys to move lines of code up and down. I think that's pretty awesome. And you can check out this video here to see even more of all the very best Eclipse shortcuts to speed up your programming.
The second thing is, not very many people know this, but at the very beginning of every constructor method, if you don't have any call to super like this, Java will actually call the parent class's noargs constructor implicitly and automatically without you having any code or anything. So if you don't have anything like this, it's as if you're calling the super class constructor with no parameters. You can always put in the super call in your constructors if you want, but you absolutely don't have to. Java will do that automatically. But that does mean if you want to use any of the other superclass constructors, you have to explicitly call it like we did here with the parameters that you want for that constructor. Otherwise, by default, it will automatically use the parent class's noargs constructor. Also, in that situation where you don't have any specific call to a superclass constructor and it automatically uses that parent class's noargs constructor, if there isn't a noargs constructor for that parent class, you're going to get an error. So if we go back to our animal class and get rid of this noargs constructor and then go back to our cat class, now you can see we have an error here because implicitly it's calling that parent class's noargs constructor and you get an error because it doesn't exist. So in this situation, you can either call some different parent class constructor like we did here, or you can actually implement that noargs constructor in your parent class. But that is an error that can be really, really tricky to hunt down and understand if you aren't familiar with this. So keep that in mind to prevent yourself from banging your head against the wall when you see that type of error in the future. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. And don't stop now, keep up the momentum and check out one of these other videos below to keep on learning. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.